Thanks for tuning in again. This video will be covering the best piece of advice that I ever got about drawing. In fact, the advice that changed my life. Holy freaking clickbait. I'm making this video because the top comment on the last video I made, the AMA, was about the advice that I shared right at the end. And I think I want this channel to have a little bit of that element where there's a bit of utility for other creative people or just other people in general. So I hope you like it. Buckle up. Apologies about the background and handheld mic. I'm still in Sri Lanka, so we've still got the newsreader in the middle of nowhere vibe. But heck, let's go. In 2016, I was a totally different guy. I was still what I would call creative, but I was very, very scattered about it. And at the time, I was working for a guy called Mark Shatner, who was an eccentric artist. Him and his wife, Jilly, would make these dog and rabbit people sculptures. You might have seen them. They're pretty stunning. And what they do is just that. All they do is make these dog and rabbit sculptures. Sometimes they're on a moped. They make them as paintings, homewares, you name it. Now, I really liked Mark Shatner. I really liked what he was about. And I was really impressed with the fact that he managed to make art his full-time gig. One time I said, how many days a week do you make art? And he responded without even thinking it was weird. He goes, all of them. And I was like, seven? And he goes, yeah, all seven. Why? At the time, that blew my mind. It wouldn't blow my mind now because now I know what it's like to find something that you love enough to do seven days a week where it doesn't even feel like work. It feels like a day's wasted if you haven't done it. But at the time, I was like, dude, what? Anyway, his passion was super contagious. Very fun, wacky, creative guy. Me, though, I was kind of young and angsty, and I did what young, angsty people do best. I complained. I'd be all like, Mark, I don't get it. You're an artist. You, you, you make all this stuff. You've kind of got this whole world, this whole stuff that you can just milk and do all the time. I feel creative. Why can't I do that? Just nice, whingy language. And one day, I guess the complaining had got to an all-time high, and he gave me a bit of tough love. He said, Campbell, you know what your problem is? One day you write a song, the next day you write a poem, and then the third day you do a drawing, and none of it adds up to anything. All you're doing is laying a single brick of a million different houses and expecting that one day it'll magically become a mansion. It's not going to happen. It hit me like a ton of mislaid bricks, man. He'd identified the problem perfectly. I was scattered. Casey Neistat has a little bit about this as well, where he says, You can do 10 things to like the first degree, like this right here, and that's how well you'll do all 10 things. Or you can do one thing to the 10th degree right there, and look how much better you do that. Naturally, my next question was, All right, Mark, we know what's wrong with me. How do I fix it? And this is where the advice came in. He just said, draw the same thing every single day. He's like, you've got so many mediums. I'll pick one for you. It's going to be drawing. And what you're going to do is just draw the exact same thing every single day. Just try it for a year and then we'll reassess. I didn't have anything to lose. And this guy knew a lot more about art than I did. So I took his advice. The only problem left to solve was what I was going to draw. And as Mark's advice was marinating in my head as I walked home from work, I walked through the park that I always walked through, and it was full of this one particular bird called the Ibis. You might know the Ibis as the Egyptian god Thoth, or if you're from Australia, you'll know them as the bin chicken. They're a big white bird with a black head who hangs around rubbish bins and eats trash. For me, they just seem like the perfect metaphor for humanity. We could fly, we could do anything we want, and yet we roll around in bin juice. I loved it. Once known as the white ibis, the species has evolved into a superior scavenger. From the city's rooftops, the bin chicken has spotted something. Bins. So I went to the pub and I drew this. Then I drew this. Then I drew this. I ended up drawing nine ibises that night and I posted them to Instagram. And I started to kind of get a sense that I was building something. I started to get a sense that I was laying bricks of the same house. But that was only the first day. The second day rolls around and I draw another ibis. There's another brick in my house. Third day, another ibis. Fourth, fifth, tenth, twentieth, thirtieth day. I just keep drawing these ibises like Mark Shatner said. And you know what happened? I got really bored of drawing ibises. But I still wanted to commit to the advice. So I was like, well, shoot, if I'm going to draw ibises, I may as well make them interesting. Screw it. I'm going to add jokes. So I start adding jokes to the ibises, just little comments about my city, little bits of social commentary. And I get really into that. I get really into the social commentary that comes along with the ibises, to the point where the ibises, by the hundredth ibis, just starts to take a bit of a back seat to said social commentary. And it's at this point that I realized the brilliance of Mark Shatner's advice. 
he wasn't telling me to draw an ibis. He was just telling me to start, because once I start, only then will I find the thing that I'm looking for. But I would never have got there if I hadn't drawn the ibis every single day. And this is true for work, this is true for like dating versus committing yourself to one person, friendship, everything. Like really focusing and investing yourself into something you're passionate about will always yield better results than scattering yourself around and spreading yourself thin. So that's the best bit of advice that I've ever received. But why is it so good? Well, I've put it down to four reasons. The first, quantity leads to quality. I've said this before. I mean, it's the reason that my videos are now going to be 70% instead of 100% perfect. I just truly believe that. And for me to approach quantity, I had to take out the decision-making process of what to draw, which Mark Shatner did so eloquently. So the second reason that I really like this advice is because it promotes constraints for creativity. Once again, we'll look at the blank page. The blank page is one of the most freakishly intimidating things. We've all been there. We've all stared it, we've all tapped it with our pens. It's very, very annoying. But compare a blank page with a blank page that says draw an ibis or a blank page that says draw a robot or a flying horse or any kind of tight brief. Immediately having a constraint lets you know exactly what you're going to be doing, which leads me to the third reason. Action comes before motivation. It's not the other way around. I think there's this myth that motivation leads to action, that you've got to wait for some sort of moment of inspiration that strikes you like lightning from the gods but it's the other way around. Firstly, you need to act and only then will you find your motivation. So for me, I needed to draw every single day and I needed to build up that habit before I could properly be motivated to draw what I actually felt like drawing. Now the fourth and final reason that this was incredible advice. I was using thinking as a form of procrastination. There's a story about a donkey who <laughs> wants some hay and wants some water, but the donkey doesn't know which one to go to first. So the donkey looks at the hay, looks at the water, looks at the hay, looks at the water. Am I hungry? Am I thirsty? Am I hungry? Am I thirsty? And eventually the donkey dies of dehydration. What a dumb donkey. I was the donkey. I was dumb. I was like, should I make this? Should I make that? Should I make this? And you know what? I didn't start, but I felt productive because I was thinking about it. But thinking about stuff is not doing stuff. It's the complete opposite of doing stuff. And I was in a trap with this deliberation and this pondering and this questioning and this thinking and this strategizing and debating all felt like they were moving me forward, but they weren't. And Mark Shatner's advice of just draw one thing every day got me out of that. I think if you're only good at one thing, that's what you do. And with both of us, um, it wasn't as though, you know, it had to be art. It was that we weren't particularly good at anything else. <laughs> so there it is, some advice. I hope it resonates with you. I hope particularly in this time of January when productivity is an all-time high, we're all a little bit drunk off New Year's resolutions and the feeling of reinventing yourself in 2020 and all this new decade kind of hype. I hope that the advice can help you um, translate some of that into action. Let me know what you thought. Hope you like the 70% video vibe. Once again, stuck to the weekly upload. Going to see if I can make a whole year of it. I'm kind of excited by the challenge. Who knows? Who knows? We'll see how we go. Until I'm back at home, I can't really do any more drawing videos because I don't have all the equipment. So hopefully you don't mind the talking to camera vibe. Hopefully there's still some value in it. Subscribe if you're new, unless you didn't like it. In which case, go for a run. Catch ya. You thought it was over, but there's one last thing that I want to show ya. When I was drawing all those ibises, there was part of me that wanted to experiment. There was a part of me that wanted to bring the ibis drawings to life. Plus, earlier I did say watch to the end. So here it is, the first ever animation I made of an ibis. Hey, what's up judges from Australian Ibis? My name's Tash, I'm from Newcastle, but now I live in Newtown, so it's kind of like Newy to Newy. Uh, Snapchat, hi Tasha, and get it, haha. <laughs> Little bit about me, um, I play guitar, I love music, I love shoegaze, um, and mostly I play covers, and mostly I play covers of No Diggity. So I think that I should be on Australian Ibis because I really represent what's going on right now in second year psych students, like this kind of like undercurrent of like, you know, art, music, creative collectives, like, I think that like, my generation is kind of like on it and I feel like I'm really on it. So I think that if Australian Ibis was like lentils anything and you can vote what you think it's worth, I would probably win. But I know it's not. I know it's like a democracy and stuff because it's like whatever. But anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you found something in this video that makes you want to put me on the show. Love, Tash, Snapchat, Hi, Tash, and Peace, Love, Vinyl, and Stone and Wood.